this is Riding with Ree and for this week's video we are going to be following the Horse and Country Masterclass of five star international eventer Imogen Murray. This set of exercises uses some trotting poles and three cross poles or fences at each end in order to help you slow your horse down or get your horse going more off the leg. So hopefully something for everyone. This is part of a series I'm doing with Horse and Country TV. This is the third in our series so far. Horse and Country TV have allowed me to take some of their masterclasses and try them out as your sort of normal rider, giving you my honest opinion as a normal rider and hopefully making some of those masterclasses feel a little bit more accessible. This is particularly exciting for me because most of Horse and Country TV's content is behind a paywall. So by watching this video, they are letting you watch one of their masterclasses for free. And there are hundreds of these masterclasses on the platform. All right, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna hand over to Imogen to explain a little bit more about what we're doing today. And then I will meet you in the school and show you how to set up this exercise. I'll see you there. So this is Zorro. He can be quite spooky and quite sharp in his mind. So for this exercise, it's a bit of a dual purpose in that it helps to make him concentrate and pay attention, but it also has a variety of uses for making a horse more polite on the landing side, more quicker off the leg. Um, it has got a little bit of a rider element as well. We definitely can't fall asleep um, doing this exercise when we get to the to the complete exercise. So here we are in the outdoor arena. Of course, it's raining when we're filming this, but I think it's important to show you how we actually set up Imogen Murray's masterclass. She mentioned in her video that there's no exact distances. So what we'll be doing is putting up two fences on the one end, some trotting poles and then a fence on the other side. If you don't have enough poles to do all of that, I'd recommend taking away one of the two on one side and keeping one on this side, one on this side and your trotting poles in the middle. If you still don't have enough fences, I'd recommend just doing it on the one side so that you have a jump in, trotting poles and then from the other direction, trotting poles and a jump. If you're still really stuck with trotting poles, I'd remove some from your trotting poles. So if you had four trotting poles, make it two, make it one, just make it a line where you're going to say you'll trot, you'll trot over because I appreciate not everyone has as many jumps as myself and, uh, and Imogen. All right, let's put these fences up. Okay, so we're all finished setting up. It's not exactly the same as what Imogen has, but we have our three trotting poles in the middle. One fence out at the end, which has got a slight curve to it, so that we come in on an angle. We have one fence straight over here, and then one fence on a slight curve. I'll be honest, after setting this up, this looks really difficult, and I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the distances and just the amount of time we have to slow down, but we'll give it a go. That's what these masterclasses are for, and if we can't quite make it work, perhaps we'll drop it down, or we'll do poles on the floor, we'll make it work however we need to. That's the whole point of doing these masterclasses. So let's go and get Ted and give this a go. Just to start with, because he is a little bit spooky, and just to get him into how the exercise is going to work, I am going to trot over the trot poles with a canter transition after the poles and a trot transition before the poles. So again, we're just going to have to do this enough times until I feel that he listens to me and does what I want him to do when I want him to do it. So we're a little bit spooky. Now he has done trot poles before, but he likes to play games. So again, we just not make a big fuss about it. Just repeat. Good. Now I'm circling inside the jumps because. Good. I want him to focus on me. And this is all about just making him a little bit quicker in his brain in a way that is actually quicker to my aids and not quicker to whoop, entertaining himself. So I thought this was a great first exercise. It's very accessible for most levels of riders. Most of us can do trotting poles and it also gave me a lot of confidence that I can pick up canter and take down canter before the trotting poles because the part of the exercise I was most worried about coming up is trotting poles um, after a fence. So cantering over a fence and then slowing down to a trotting poles. I was worried we might not be able to um, slow down quick enough, but this was beautiful. I was absolutely above and beyond delighted with this canter and trot transition that we're getting over these poles. So I found this exercise just really great for giving me a lot of confidence. And this is something I would definitely throw into a flat work session in the future because it's easy to set up and it was super fun.
I think it's obvious which is our better reign, is it not? <laughs> Just a reminder, I guess, to us all to make sure we do everything equally on both reigns so that we can see our own weaknesses as riders and make sure that we also straighten out any weaknesses with our horses. But overall, a fantastic first exercise and one that I super, super enjoyed. On to our first jump. Right, so again, we're going to start by picking up the canter, coming into the poles, trotting over the poles, and we're going to go straight on good boy good so you can start with these a uh, small or poles on the floor or whatever yes so we're going to go trotting poles and then straight over a fence this time which i think is where you trot and then you push into canter so now that we know we can get canter after the trot poles we're going to do it with a jump at the end so this is one of the reasons I picked this masterclass. Ted can get really, really quick after, or just before and after a fence. So having something to just make him think was really, really helpful. Do that again. That was very nice. We do have a slight issue with rushing. So I feel like this exercise is a really good one to try. over the last bits of the pole. So he has a bit smart for these exercises, so I need to make sure I keep him in the trot while we trot over the pole. Yeah, this is something that comes up when I was watching the footage back. I think I could have been a little bit stronger in keeping him in the trot, both before and after the jump, just making sure that we really are being true to those trot poles and not just galloping off. Very good. But we are looking for him to jump more forward off my leg. Good boy. Good, so he's been very good on the canter to trot before, after the fence before the poles, which is nice because he is a horse that occasionally, more so in competition than at home, if he jumps a fence he will be a little bit slow to listen to me in waiting and balancing. So whilst, good boy, that was better, good boy. Thank you. So if I come to this with a little bit more power, good boy. And then we can start to add in. Good boy, the plank. Now I was so this was the exercise I was most nervous about was jumping and then coming back to trot and then going back into canter just because he does take off a little bit. Um, you can see me having to pull him up a little bit sharp there, but actually that was quite a lovely fence and really makes him sit up and listen. And this is what Imogen was saying, that this exercise is good for a variety of horses, those that both rush after their fences and before their fences and those that don't want to go off the leg. And you can see that even though he knocked that first fence down, he did come back for the trot, which was really nice to see. This is going very nicely I think actually. So now we're going to try another trotting pole to cross pole. So I was feeling much more confident in our ability to do the trotting poles before the jump instead of afterwards so I took it back a step because I wanted to make sure that every time that we jump together without a coach in this instance that we have a really positive experience so I did take it back a step and I think you should feel empowered to do the same thing. Do another trot pole. Since I've started doing this series with Horse and Country, I've seen such an improvement in our way of going together and obviously that's down to a lot of things, but I do think doing such a variety of masterclasses and having a focus for each session has really, really helped and hopefully you can see it too. Well, we're getting good with the chop pole before the fence. It's just afterwards it can be tricky. And I don't want to lose our confidence too much. We'll try it once, let's have a look. So I nearly didn't put this clip in because I felt a little bit self-conscious. I didn't think it was our best, but I did want to show you a real attempt at this exercise. I do find that pull up really hard in the middle. So we finished on a positive note at the end. I'm going to finish with top pole to cross pole on both reins because I'm really, really happy with how we're getting to with that. And I don't want to ruin our confidence by not quite getting the other exercise right. It will come. The fact that we can have such a nice approach to a fence in itself is such a sort of big step. So we're gonna finish on that today, finish on high, and then try and get the trot pole, the cross pole, trot pole, cross pole on another day. That's the plan. So we're gonna do it once more with just the trot pole before the fence and we're gonna finish there. 
I could not be more proud with how we finished this exercise and that is how I like to finish all of the exercises on a high like this. He just looks amazing. I'm so proud. Lovely. Once more on the other rain. This rain actually. And we'll finish. I'm super happy with where we've got to. I hope that you have found our real attempt at Image and Murray's masterclass useful and you've seen how you can adapt this masterclass depending on what you and your horse needs. I know that this is something I can pick up with my coach. I don't want to create any bad habits for Ted. So we just brought it back to doing trotting poles for the cross pole, but I'm super happy with that. He went really, really nicely. We ended up having some lovely jumps and that's what these masterclasses are all about. Imogen's masterclass goes on with two other horses at different stages with different fences. So I recommend that you give it a watch. I'll put it in the link in bio. Um, thank you for joining.